John here guys and today we're talking about this very special prototype frame by the master of micro long range Dave C. Dave C if you're not familiar with his channel go subscribe to it right away. He is a guy that has been coming up with a lot of open source frame designs, the most popular of which is that little tiny four or three inch micro long range. He's been sending that thing on the Vista unit over the lakes of the Bavarian Alps into the mountains. Really testing the range and he has a very um, a loyal following of people that love to build his open source designs. So I saw a lot of his micro four inch popping up in my local community. People were getting the frames cut, building them up, going on a little bit of freestyle fun as our racing season is down right now. People want a bit more range these days. Range. And so I wanted to check this guy out. And I didn't really want to build that same formula though. I was kind of really wanting something ultralight five inch at the same time. And it just so happened he'd been, he'd been working on this prototype. So I reached out to him, wanting to know if we could do a Dave C Johnny five collaboration. And he agreed to let me test the initial version of this frame. And I have to tell you, it does look a bit unorthodox in shape and design. Um, but it is exactly what I have been looking for. If you caught my review the other day of the Pod Racer, I've been using this very special Beta FPV 1805 2550KV motor on 4S, and this flies really great. Uh, but it was a little bit too light, a little bit too floaty, and I was wondering if this same formula would be perfect for an ultralight freestyle rig. Now, Dave C had been using this formula on 2203 or 2004 size motors, but I wanted to bring it a little bit smaller and try to get the weight down as low as possible. And I was able to shrink the weight. This, with the props, with the strap, with everything, weighs 187 grams, 187. That's right. Uh, that is an amazingly light five inch formula. And with a 850 milliamp 4S pack, I can comfortably get seven minutes ish of cruising. I'm really trying to get my hands on a 1050 or an 1100 forest pack. John from the future here guys. And I'm here to tell you that this quad actually got 11 minutes of freestyle, not just cruising on a 1050 milliamp forest tattoo pack. Wow, what amazing flight times. Cruising, I'm guessing you could bump that up to 12, 13 minutes. Very impressive. I think that'll give it a little bit of extra weight. Um, it does still feel a little bit white, a little bit it does still feel a little bit light, so I would really welcome the extra weight of a heavier pack um, just to keep it stable in the air. I noticed that when I was flying on sort of a windy day, I was getting a little bit of bobbling, but other than that, it flies so good. This thing is so quiet. You just cannot hear it. There was one point I was at a park and I saw a park worker driving in one of these little mini ATVs and I was just cruising along following them. And now unlike some of the other people out there, I don't like bothering people with quads, but I knew that there's no way he could hear it from the 30 feet or so uh, <laughs> behind him that I was. Now, no, I never flew over him. Don't ever fly over people, guys. This is in a unique design. It is held together with these bike sprocket bolts. This is a non-standard FPV item. Um, Dave C has used this on his five inch version of the toothpick before, and he decided to use it again here. Um, I really like this. When I stumbled upon this, I was actually working on my own frame design. I've, I've kind of modeled it out in, uh, and printed it in PLA just to get the sizing right. Um, and so this is the the bottom plate that I was going for, but this really checks off all the boxes. So I'm not sure if I'll continue with this process or not. I probably will create something there pretty soon just to try it. Is this a freestyle basher? I'm not sure. I do really love the versatility and camera protection of this pod design that he has. And I really like how you can get um, a lot more versatility from a traditional top and bottom plate freestyle design with the concept of a TPU um, mount like this. Unlike mounting the camera between the standoffs, this really allows you to get some versatility. And if you look at the bottom below, you actually have this. So this 
piece of carbon will hit along with the TPU if you have a front end crash. The camera is totally enclosed in there. You don't actually see the edges though. So he really took some time to get these measurements perfect. And as you can see, it has an included GoPro style mounts at the top if you wanted to run a GoPro in conjunction with this, which I think it could do perfectly. Um, so a couple of Johnny Five additions. I like having arm guards on any type of frame lately, and I've been on a Fusion 360 tear. Um, I've learned quite a bit from Dave C's channels on his tutorials, so I decided to make this arm guard for his frame. I'll put this out on Thingiverse as soon as he releases the designs. I actually liked an antenna design that I made for a three inch bang guide. And so I took that, kind of modified it and made this antenna. The one that he uses is more geared towards long range and makes the antenna set a little bit higher. The other thing is that for his antenna design, you have to run the antenna through the holder before you add it to the Vista, which is something I forgot to do. I didn't want to undo the antenna because it's kind of a pain to get those on and off of these Vista units, one of my few gripes. And so rather than take it off, I just made my own mount, printed it up and put it on there. Um, so I'm pretty happy with how this came out. He does have a little 3D printed option for having a GPS unit at the back and holding your mini Immortal T. But since I wasn't going to use GPS, um, I decided to just zip tie this to the bottom plate. There's plenty of good, great places to zip tie the mini Immortal T. And because this bottom plate is sort of on two planes, if you see that, the front part is lower than the rear. So you could... Uh, very easily install this on the rear and it's not like putting the center part of the middle mini immortal t it's not putting the center part of the immortal t you know flatter to the ground it's it's perfectly level with the arm so you're not even going to be touching that i really like this it keeps the ends of the antenna elements free from the carbon which is kind of what you want it's probably not optimized for going long range um, but that's okay because I'm not going to be doing that anyway. This was so fun, guys. The control, the power that you have on this is simply amazing. Now, is this ever going to equal this? Are you ever going to get the same amount of power as you do on a 5 or a 6 inch standard quad with giant 22 something size motors? And the answer is no. The top speeds are still pretty high. I would guess they'll probably be 90 90-ish miles an hour, so maybe 10 or 15% slower top end than this. The punch is uh, also equivalently less, but I'm not like a super punchy freestyler guy. This can do all of the moves that you want, but the power is there, the speed is there. Um, you sacrifice 10 or 15% on both of those ends, but what you gain is an extreme reduction in weight. And when I have such a light quad in the air, it just, it, all of those nerves just go away. You get a reduction in price. This comes out hundred and something dollars, 120, $130 cheaper than what I would be able to build the equivalent premium drone frame for. Um, it comes with an exceptional amount of control. Sometimes when you build these up so powerful, uh, it becomes a little bit hard to do super precise maneuvers through tiny spaces. Now, what I mean by that is if you keep your formula light so that it can do fun freestyle, then you're, it gets a little bit twitchy if you're trying to go very small. So to test that, I went through a very long corridor of indoor stuff going through outdoor and it just flew straight as an arrow. The control was amazing. I love this formula. I love this weight. Um, Dave C is already gonna make a few um, changes. I did notice that in his prototype design, the arm didn't quite touch in the middle, but these bike bolts are really made for holding a bike sprocket together. So you can put quite a lot of torque on those. So even though they didn't touch, you get so much tightness with these things that the, bolt, the arms don't really have any play. And so that didn't affect it. So notice how with this formula, you can really go cheaper all around. This is the Mamba MK2, guys. This is the $38 stack, and it works beautifully. This is the Vista. You can get those on sales. If you pay attention to the FPV sales alerts group, you can get those for $125, $135 all day long. Of course, the Crossfire Special Edition, you can't really go wrong with that, but I can even save you a couple of bucks on that too. 
The frame itself, after getting cut, was probably gonna be about 35 bucks. So in the end, these may be 35, 40 bucks, most likely. The bike bolts, I did have to buy separate. They come in a pack of five. So if you bought two of those, you'd have enough to do um, five quads. And so the price of these ends up being like three bucks or so for a pair. Um, so not bad. Um, if I was just gonna go freestyling, I'd probably prefer to take this over this if I was going to go somewhere where there was people anywhere in the area or somewhere where it was a risk of crashing onto something. The lighter weight really gives me a little bit of extra peace of mind just in case you always want to have safety in mind first. Now, if I was going wide open spaces, I may take this and carry a GoPro because that's going to be the ultimate solution. But for any other scenario, this is just amazing. These Gym Fan 5125 T-mount props are really good. And I believe you can actually use this on a T-mount or a regular mount um, because of the unique design that they have. If you ever saw the Gym Fan Wind Dancer 3028 three inch prop that could go on either type of shaft, this is the same kind of formula. It has this little plastic uh, nub adapter. And because of that, you actually end up getting a full size hub on those HQ T-mount props. I just, if you if you did a hard enough punch, you would rip the prop right off of the shaft. I don't think you're gonna have that issue with this. And uh, my goodness, what a, oh, this has been so much fun. It's been one of the most fun quads I've built in a while. Um, you know that feeling when you have a really awesome quad, even when you have 20 or 30 or however many quads I have sitting around here, when you just can't wait to wake up and go fly something. I've been getting that with this project. I, I don't even know what the name of it's gonna be. Call it the Johnny Five. No, don't call it Johnny Five. It's probably gonna be like Micro Long Range Five or something like that. But uh, man, um, I did get a tiny amount of props in view, even with this crazy dead cat design. I'm not super in love with the shape of the arm design. People were kind of making fun of me in the, in the, in the local group saying that it looks kind of weird. Um, but you know what? Like, it flies amazing. Go fly one and then tell me if you still care about how it looks. Now, if you do, if this does get released and you do decide to build one, this uses M2 standoffs, which when I got my order cut at CNC Madness, CNC Madness did a great job on this frame, by the way. Um, I ordered M3 standoffs, which was, now I got a bunch of 20 millimeter M3 standoffs that I can't use for anything. Um, so get the right size standoffs, 20 millimeter seem to work. It's a little tight. You could go with a 23 millimeter. The one at the front is gonna be slightly longer um, because it does go on this lower plane. So I'm thinking that's gonna need to be 25, but I just used a little, um, spacer in there and it worked totally fine what do you think in the comments guys have you tried any of this magic ultralight five inch um, it's cool on racing style quads it's very fun if you're actually going through gates though i think you're better off with a full-size quad um, i think these are really fun for just park flying freestyling stuff like that and if i'm gonna be doing that type of flying anyway why not give me the top mount goodness of something like this? Thanks, guys.